Happy Wednesday! Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, and it's a time where we can just relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end. And I hope that you head over to penguinandfish.com uh, to learn more about Penguin and Fish and sign up for our newsletter there and get a free embroidery pattern. Uh, so we have a whole pile of stuff going on tonight. So first of all, we are going to finish our spooky clock tower by uh, Betts White. So this is part of her Lil Felt Village stitch along. You can see the link below here. This is, I think, the number eighth, the eighth out of the eight out of twelve um, little cute little houses that she's making. Obviously, this one's specially spooky for for autumn for Halloween, and uh, we are just about done. I just have to trim off. I just have to trim off our little base here. Uh, we can put our little candles in and check it out. But I just freaking love how this turned out. Isn't it just so sweet? So we're finishing that project tonight. I'm just really excited about that. I'm going to have it set up behind me here, I think, with the little lights on. Uh, but there are a lot of felt scraps from this project. So I have a couple of little projects in mind that I'd like to do today and tomorrow. So the first one is I want to make some coasters. And so I thought we'd have like some bigger pieces of felt on the bottom for the coasters and then lay all our tiny scraps on top. And I thought we could free, free motion quilt them on top, the little scraps on top of the bigger piece of felt. So I haven't free motion quilted in a long time. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited to do that. Uh, and then uh, after we're done with that, well, first of all, I'm going to give away the coasters. So I want one of you guys to have the coasters when I'm finished. So uh, to anyone who shares this video on Facebook, I will uh, put your name in the running for the coasters that we make here tonight. And I'll let you guys know in tomorrow's video who has won them and I'll send them off to you. Uh, so that's kind of fun. I'm excited for that uh, to practice my free motion quilting and just layer these scraps onto felt. I think it's just going to be a really fun way to use up scraps. I mean, these would go in the garbage otherwise, you know? Um, so there's that. We're going to do that tonight. And then I would like to see if we can start a project that I'd like to finish tomorrow night. So I need to make a little sleeve for my laptop and I have enough of this felt left over that I think I'll be able to make a sleeve and I just happen to find the perfect zipper for it as well. So I thought we could kind of make a quick down and dirty um, sleeve for my computer with a zipper and just kind of design it on the fly. <laughs> so I'll see if I have some paper here and uh, we'll sketch it up. I think I have an idea of how I want it to work, but you know, no real instructions or anything or measurements. So we'll figure that out as well. But we're going to use up all this felt and I'm super stoked. Uh, so all right, I'm going to uh, uh, flip you guys around. We'll start out by finishing the spooky clock tower and then we'll make some coasters. Ooh, I'm excited. All right. Okay, so here is the laptop. I'm, in, I'm acquiring my husband's old laptop. And uh, uh, I have these two, so the yellow and the black, I have enough to do like a double layered um, sleeve. So I thought like two layers of felt would be enough to protect it. I just want to uh, protect it enough so I can slip it in and out of my bag and so it doesn't get scratched. And look at the zipper I found. Um, it is the longest zipper I could find because I only have like seven inch zippers around the house here. And uh, this one happens to be 14 inches. It is the exact size that I need for uh, for this computer and it totally 100% matches this yellow felt which I want to use as the outside of um, this cover. So that was some lucky luck uh, today. 
So I'm going to put that aside, but uh, I'm super excited about that. So I'm going to set those two fabrics aside because I want to, because they're the only ones big enough for the sleeve. So I'm going to make the coasters out of these two. And I think specifically I'm going to use this um, burgundy as my base. So, and I think, you know, Kathy says, make sure I have some felt for the red schoolhouse. I suspect that if I cut a chunk out of a fabric out of here for a set of coasters, I'm going to have plenty of plenty of fabric yet. I mean, look how much we use on this. Hardly any, right? So I think I will have enough to make that cute little schoolhouse yet that I want to do uh, from the little felt village. So, all right. So that is up next. And just to show you guys, here are my scraps. I saved every single little scrap from this project, and I'm just thinking of abstractly like laying it on um, this felt to see to see what we can come up with. But first of all, let's finish up our clock tower. So yesterday, what we did on this was we uh, cut this bottom base, and uh, we. Uh, glued our pedestal here to the base. So there's a hole in here so we can put a candle in. Uh, but I, I put these little uh, wonder clips on here because it was kind of poofing out. The, the base and the wonder clips were kind of holding it in. Oops, they are a little bit glued to it. So um, that was kind of pushing our piece so it's a little more square. And you know what? I think it totally worked. <laughs> They're a little glued on there, but uh, they're they're still popping off with a little wiggle. They might uh, they might have a little glue on there, but I think they'll still work as wonder clips. So all right, I'm gonna throw those. Actually, let's put them right back in the case here. Those are my two little candles, so these don't fall everywhere. Okay, so here is our base. Yeah, that, that does look more square than, than what it was. Like we have some nice straight lines here. So all we have to do to finish this is cut off, um, cut off this base. So I'm a little actually nervous about that. I'm nervous about getting too close here, but I think we're going to be okay. Ah. <laughs> so this is just an extra layer of protection this base, and I think one of the benefits of it was um, it, it is going to keep its shape now because it's glued down versus it kind of, you know, bubbling out the base, um, like rounding out a little bit. Now it's kind of going to keep it square. Just making sure it's actually still glued and, and we're good yet. Okay, and I want to do one more thing, actually. But first of all, there we go. All, all nice and clean. I'm going to scooch these away. Oh, I do, what I wanted to do is on, uh, on the cap, so this is that little cute little, little spooky topper that we made for it, um, that we glued together last night as well. And you can see all the glue has dried clear, and it's, it's good to go. Um, what I do want to do though is I uh, I want to trim this white away. I kind of have this white all the way around. Um, and since this isn't, you know, it's just um, it's just like a, a little overhang here. I didn't want to cut it off when I saw it on these pieces because I didn't want it to all of a sudden start tilting and being weird. But since this isn't um, determining any of that, nothing's um, sitting underneath this. I'm gonna just trim trim this next to the felt as well. Hopefully it doesn't look crooked. If it does, we'll just even it out. <laughs> Hopefully we won't get too picky, but that was bothering me a little bit. I just must not have cut my um, felt big enough. But I think this is okay. No problem doing this. Oh, I'm excited. So uh, let me know if any of you guys else have worked on the spooky clock tower and if you are working on these be sure to post stuff in the penguin and fish crafters group on facebook i'm excited to see more of them and yeah if you guys are interested in doing more i think i'd, I'd like i would like to do that schoolhouse at some point 
still. Um, but yeah, there's 12 of them total, and all the spring and summer ones are out already. Um, so you can get all those patterns right away. Oh, that really finished it off well, didn't it? Man, just cleaning it up. That looks good. Okay, let's spike these guys up a little bit. And all that's left is we just set that on the top. <laughs> it's cute. This looks like a little uh, Dracula thing going on here. Oh, Kathy has everything pressed and you need to do the Peltex. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to tilt my camera up because I want to see what this looks like with um, with the little candles in. So let's let's stand it up here. So there's my, my little scraps and everything. Um, all right, so it does have the hole in the bottom. And remember, there's a hole in this level too. So um, in theory, that middle window should light up. And these are just so cute, they, they kind of flicker a little bit too. <laughs> All right, so that kind of goes underneath. Oh, there you can see it flicker there. Uh, and this one is right behind the clock, so this is a bit brighter. But it's isn't it just like those little villages, those Christmas villages? Um, let me get it so you guys can see a little bit better. It's like those Christmas villages, but felt, which is just so fun. Okay, so... Sorry, I'm wiggling there a little bit. All right, and then our cute little topper. I think that's like the best part there. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's cute. It's so cute. So I love, um, I love how it flickers. So what a neat touch to have these vellum windows. I just love that. Um, I love how this is just like a barely a flicker. Um, in the dark, I think you'd be able to see that a whole lot more. And then this is just super bright. And we have it at 8.30 when we <laughs> start our Facebook Lives here. Oh, I can't, I can't dim my house light, I don't think. Oh, here, let me, let me try something quick here. Oh, there we go, a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I think uh, my I, my iPhone auto corrects for the light, so um, I will take a picture of this though this evening um, when it's a little um, darker in here, just so we can see it. But I'll leave that on for the rest of the evening here. I'll put it behind me. But yay! Okay, so that is the spooky clock tower. Uh, I am just over the moon happy with it. It's just so sweet, isn't it? So there we are. I'm gonna put it behind me, and then we can check it out later when we're done. That little top on that is cute, cute though. All right, you guys, I want to start sewing um, these coasters. So I don't have a total plan. I just have a little bit of an idea. So I was thinking, um, you know, the main, the main thought of this is that I have all these goofy scraps left over uh, from this project and I just, I just have a hard time throwing them away. I mean, let me know if any of you guys are like that. If you keep like all of your scraps and stuff, this is actually kind of a bigger, nice scrap. Maybe I'll save that. Um, but all of these little scraps, I thought it would be kind of fun to do like an abstract sort of thing. Um, you know, just like plopping pieces down like this, kind of making like a little art piece of just scrappy scraps overlapping them a little bit. Since they're gonna be coasters, they are gonna to have to be sort of level. <laughs> so I don't want like a big mound. Um, but then I thought we just free motion quilt over all of it. I'm kind of hoping that I don't even need to glue them down or anything uh, because it's felt, they kind of stick to each other. Uh, so we're gonna give that a try. I just, just like throwing all that away just is freaking me out. <laughs> so I think let's use uh, this um, this burgundy as our base just because we have a lot of gray and so I I think um, we'll do the gray on top of the burgundy versus you know gray on top of gray since that's the other color that I kind of have um, so let's see I was thinking maybe four inch sized oh here we go thought that looked weird um, four inch size coasters I don't know does that look 
looks like a normal size coaster, doesn't it? I wonder what four and a half looks like. Oh yeah, four and a half looks a little big. Okay, we're gonna do four inch coasters. So what I thought I'd do is cut out like an eight inch piece. I'll actually probably cut out a nine inch piece just so we have some extra. Cut out a nine inch piece and then we can put our little collage on top of the, um, oh yes, Robin, exactly that, Robin. So um, uh, Robin's got it. I think I'm going to cut a bigger piece, so like a nine or 10 inch piece, and then put all our little pieces on and then free motion it and uh, um, then uh, trim it down into the four. So we'll make like a set of four coasters. That's like a normal set, right? I think so. We'll do four coasters. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna bother with cutting this edge really nice because we will cut that down. I do wanna press it, but let's, let's, um, let's cut first. So let's see, I want it, I want it cut down to eight inches ultimately, or two, you know, four inches. So I'll, why don't we make this, let's make it 10 inches, then I can have a little, little leeway um, to trim so I can, so I won't have any overlap, but I'll, you know, when I cut it, I'll be cutting like some of the scraps, if that makes sense. So let's, I just, I have to count out. It freaks me out just to do this um, with the measurements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So we guessed well. <laughs> All right. I'm going to grab my rotary cutter here. And let's get the glove on. Um, we'll use these gloves for quilting as well, but um, I've been trying to use it for um, cutting. I am on my cutting mat here, there. Okay. And I think I might actually cut this scrap out and use it as uh, practice for free motion quilting since it has been ages and ages for free motion quilting. No, this is not a new ro uh, not a new ruler. Um, it's actually one that I had for a while. I, I kind of hate it though. Um, so here's here's this ruler uh, versus here is an Omni Grid ruler. Like here, I love that it has the angle marker, and I like that these tiny little dots, and I like that these lines are really small. Here, I don't have like any of those markings. I think this was actually meant to make a certain design. It was, it was meant to make one of these um, kind of pineapple blocks, which I've never made. That would be kind of fun to make sometime, but this was a special ruler for that. But I think I didn't know that at the time. I think I was very, um, I didn't know about all those different blocks and stuff. So I think if I go back, I try and get maybe a bigger Omni grid one because I really like this. But for the time being, I am still using that. I just don't use it very often. Uh, only when I need to cut a square that's bigger than, than six and a half inches here, um, like like this. All right, so let's let's see. Oh no, the repaired ruler. So uh, uh, we repaired. Oh, I don't know if I have that near me. Oh yeah, so we repaired one of the clearly perfect slotted trimmers. I bet you can't even really tell which one. So we did this with um nail polish glue but look right here you can see this ruler was cr it was broken like this piece was completely separate from this piece um and we uh, put some nail polish glue or some nail glue like for acrylic nails on on the edge there and now it's like brand new <laughs> so that's that's the one we repaired that was fun i had never done that before i didn't even know it could be done and did some little research and there we go. All right, I'm gonna just start by kind of laying stuff on here. You know, I, I don't have too much rhyme or reason for this. I just want one to look kind of cool. Um, so we'll ultimately be cutting this into fours. Oh, it'd be kind of cool if they connected over like a couple there. I know, isn't that just crazy, Mark? I just. I didn't know that. I thought it was ruined for sure, and I was past the amount of time to like return it or um, couldn't get a hold of anyone or something. And uh, um, just did a little search on 
on repairing acrylic rulers, and I, I forget where I saw it, but someone had was was just like get some acrylic nail glue, and I am just over the top amazed at how how well that worked. All right, I'm literally just plopping stuff down on here. I think it's just kind of fun. What I'm trying to avoid is too much overlap because if I build it up too high, then you know if you set a glass on it. It's gonna fall down, but this is some neat kind of shapes. So I'm trying to not to get too precious with it because if I do, then um, then I start questioning decisions. <laughs> oh my gosh, for real! So Lisa says that she stepped on her hundred dollar extension table, which is like this thing here and uh, use nail glue and like new. Oh my God, wasn't that like a little magic miracle? <laughs> it really was just exciting. All right, you guys, I know this looks like crazy town, but I think it's gonna make some really fun coasters. Let's get, this is my single other piece of yellow. Let's get that in here somewhere. <laughs> So, you know, when we cut these up, you know, that's actually something we could do if you just, we could make like a little window and you can kind of see what um, they're each going to look like. I think they kind of go to, this look, one looks like it might need some more. Let's put like some goofy other little circle shapes. That one's kind of cool. You know, we could do similar colors too. There's a, this one is a um, burgundy one. I think it needs more gray. Let's there. We will be trimming it at the edge, but that'll just make all these shapes kind of run at the edge nice. Let's add more of these burgundy shapes. They'll just add some layers to it. We need some black down here. We are still going to have a ton of scraps left over. Oh, I'm getting picky now. I'm getting picky. I can feel it. I got to stop that real quick. Oh, this can uh, this can go get your mind being picky real quick, can it? Oh my god, I'm getting so picky now. All right, let's just put this there. You know, that's probably enough, but look, we have so many scraps left yet. We have all of these, so I could probably do a whole another one. We could do maybe a gray set, too. Um, maybe let's do this. Let's just, let's just give this a try. Ugh, now I just feel like I have to add more on though. Um, let's give this a try and then we'll see, we'll see if it even works, right? This is totally an experiment night tonight. Put one little cross of purple back on top there. There we go. All right, I think we're done. <laughs> it's getting crazy now, right? Uh, I am gonna just trim this off because I think that's gonna get in my way. Okay. So um, none of this is really attached. Uh, it's just kind of gripping because it's on felt and the felt on felt kind of grabs. And I forgot to iron this too, but that's okay. Um, I am going to just stick this underneath my machine here and we're gonna give it a go. Actually, I want to do a little test to my cut a piece of that. Um, oh here, I was going to cut a little piece of this burgundy and I'm going to um, practice on here really quick. Again, it has been ages since I've uh, done any free motion quilting and it's on the, um, on the, uh, the splendid sampler quilt that we're working on. Oh, you should be able to get this wet. I don't think that's that'll be a problem at all. Um, you probably don't want to, well, I don't know. You could probably even wash it. I mean, ideally, you wouldn't probably do either. Uh, I'm not going to put anything on top of it. So that's the question mark for me. So when I do this with normal fabric, I put a piece of Fabricel V on top to protect the whole thing. And then I can just free motion quilt all over um, really easily. Uh, I'm not doing it this time. I'm going to see if I can free motion quilt with um, all these pieces just floating. 
um, it might be a total disaster, and that's kind of what we're going to try. So let's um, actually, you know, we could just we could test with some layers on on here. This will be a little practice piece. We can see how it goes. So I'll try and start not on. Um, not on an actual piece, just on the background. All right, I'm, I'm bringing the floss, the thread up. There we go. Grab my little scissors. Where did he go already? There we go. So I'm bringing that back thread up, and I'm doing this. So I'm also, I'm also using up bobbins that I have laying around, and I have these little bitty um, things of thread that have barely anything left on it. So I'm trying to use that up too. So this is an, a using up stuff all over the place. Oh, let me lower my presser feet. Make sure those are down. Um, what else do we have to do? Okay, zero on our stitch length. Let's see if we stitch. <laughs> so again, it has been ages and ages. Let's get our gloves on too. Oh, we could use um we could use our grippets. So here are my grippets. Oh gosh, I'm scared. All right, I'm gonna try and this looks too low, so I'm gonna raise my foot up a little bit, as high as I can go, and that's that's as high as it can go there. So we are gonna have to help help these little pieces. I'm gonna try and do this without first. All right. All right, I'm going to just try and stitch on top of these pieces. <laughs> okay, it's totally fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm having a good time already. So <laughs> obviously my, my stitching is kind of crazy, but I think the concept is there. Oh, there I'm moving, moving around too quickly. It's been a while, you guys. I gotta remember. I get, I gotta press the, um, press the pedal more, and um, move a little slower. All right, I think I'm getting into it again, though. All right, let's just take a look. I think that was just enough practice. <laughs> enough to remember what the heck I'm doing here. So in general, there we are. Um, I went too fast in these spots here. I don't think I'll, I'll do that again. But here's the back. So that's kind of maybe um, not great tension, but it gets a little bit better here. Let's see. We want looser tension on top. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to do one more quick with the looser tension just to see um, what that looks like. Let's plop some pieces down here again. And then I think we'll move on to the real, real piece here. I know, Lisa, I have not used this sewing machine in ages and ages. We've been using that, um, my, uh, Kenmore from the 20s. <laughs> so uh, my 70s Kenmore, which is this one. Uh, it's been a little while. And actually, I had to put this table back on it, the, uh, my extension table. I, it was still sized for the older machine. And um, it took a while. I had to put the feet back in and everything. So. It feels like a brand new setup here, that's for sure. All right, so that's holding, I mean, that looks cool. Look at that, holding um, the little poofy uh, felt down. All right, my tension's still pretty crazy, but I think we're just gonna let it be. That's just how the tension is gonna be. We could maybe double layer, double layer our felt. That'd make it like a little thicker coaster. Let's see what that looks like. One more test, I might need to cut out some more felt. Oh, then we're up too high, I think. Oh yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna stick to. I'm gonna stick to just the one layer, and you know I'm dealing with 
this old thread and stuff too, so. <laughs> Making it hard for myself tonight. All right, we're doing it for real here. So, do I have a plan? What style should we do? I've just been kind of going all over. Um, we could actually try a design. Tighten the tension on the top. But it's it's pulling it's pulling too much through. So I think if anything, it's got to be loosened. Uh, I think we're probably fine. I'm gonna just leave it. Um, all right, uh, let's think about this. I could just do some swirls. That would connect everything probably. Or we could just kind of go back and forth and back and forth. Maybe that would be kind of cute. Just try and do like some even little bits. I think we're gonna do that, even though it's not so glamorous, but um, it is gonna get the job done. And then it, the busyness can be in the um, the work on top versus uh, the quilting. So let's. I think I'm gonna do that. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of make an arc here. And we're gonna just shimmy over, and we're gonna just go back and forth. And remember, I'm gonna be cutting, cutting off um, the edge, so you won't see any of these connecting edges. I'm using my ruler as sort of a guide for um, the width. So it's a quarter inch ruler. <laughs> I think it's gonna take us a little while to get a feel for this and I am gonna get, uh, I think I'm gonna use the gloves. So I have a little bit more of a grip here. All right, where did that other glove go? The cutting glove. There we go. Okay. We are doing it, people! <laughs> it's been, gosh, when was the last time that we free motion quilted? I think it, it has to be months and months. So I'm just gonna lift, I'm gonna set my hand down and lift it up so I don't kind of budge this. Ooh, we are gonna have to, I'm gonna have my stiletto available here if I need to tuck anything under. Oh man, look, I think I lost bobbin already. Oh my gosh, you guys, I totally ran out of bobbin already. Okay, we need to get serious here. So I need, I need um, a larger bobbin. So this bobbin is gonna show up on the bottom. But you know what, maybe we glue, maybe we glue a base onto this just so you don't see my stitches on the back maybe. Okay, well, we used up that bobbin. Um, I'm gonna use, let's see. Here are all my like bobbins I'm trying to use up. Let's use, oh here, this'll, this'll kind of match. I think this is actually pretty close to what I was using and that's, this is a large bobbin's worth, so. Oh, boy, getting back into it. I feel like I'm getting all the, the jitters out for, for this, for doing it later. I think I might want to do some free motion quilting on this uh, computer sleeve that, that I want to do too. All right, I'm going to start from the line here again. Oops, a little knot here. Oh, let's bring, did I bring that thread up already? No. All right, I'm gonna bring the bottom thread up. Let's, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so now both threads are on the top of the fabric. All right. 
I feel good now. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm gonna just snip these so they're out of my hair. I suppose that's good that it starts at the beginning of this. Give it this stiletto to tuck that under. Get under there, buster. <laughs> Those are gonna be the wonkiest coasters ever, but I think they'll be cute still. That's the thing. Like, no matter what you do for this, it's gonna end up kinda cool. Take this hand off. Ah, escaped piece. So it's it's working. We're doing something here. It would be a little bit easier if I had some sort of cover for this, but I didn't I didn't want to deal with all that. I thought this would be enough. And it's fine, it's just a little extra weird um, deal. I do want to see if this can get any higher, but I don't think it can. No, it was dropping a little bit. Oh, fun guess. I know none of you might want this now, but <laughs> maybe they'll maybe they'll look kind of cool when they're done. I am doing a giveaway for these coasters uh, that I'm making right now. Um, so whoever shares this video tonight uh, will be entered to win these wackadoodle coasters that I'm making right now. So I will I'll announce the winner tomorrow in tomorrow's Facebook Live. You know, these are pretty wacky, and my lines are going to be all over the place, but they are going to look cool still. Like, it still looks like this fun, um, this fun kind of abstract sort of deal, even with the wacky quilting that's not, uh, that's kind of all over the place. That's kind of part of the charm of it, I think. Are you going to work arcs from each corner? Oh, that, that's something I could do. I could change this up, couldn't I? I could kind of arc this way and then come back around and then kind of fill in a little bit. Ooh, I kind of like that. Okay, so let's let's get a little bit more abstract here. I'm going to go to like here and then I'm going to arc. I'm going to arc like this way and then we'll fill in this shape and then we'll come back down here. And... I don't know, go some other direction. <laughs> ah, I could come up here like this. No, let's let's go like halfway and then arc this way. Let's do that. Okay, so let's go there. So now I'm gonna cut across here, see how that goes. I gotta go slow just to tuck all these little pieces under. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I think it's gonna be interesting once we cut it all up though. All right. Scooching up.
You know, now I'm thinking I probably should have done something maybe a little bit more random for the stitching because then you can tell that I'm doing random stitching on purpose. Although this is kind of fun. I do think this is fun. <laughs> So we'll definitely finish this tonight um, and then tomorrow and later today even I want to get started on that zipper pouch. Uh -oh. Cut up somehow. We are stuck! Alright, we are totally stuck here, so I'm gonna cut this. Am I caught on something? No. It is just gonna be one of those days, I think. There we go. Unstuck. Weird. Oh, I just got in a huge tangle down here. So I think some of this is because I'm using kind of weird old thread to... I'm definitely gonna get another piece of felt to cover this up with though because I think it probably needs it. Um, so I think what, what we'll do is I'll cut the pieces and then um, when we're done I will sew around the edge a little bit just so that it's we have a nice edge and not um, not oh, where you can see all my horrible stitching underneath. <laughs> it's all gonna be cute and good. I'm excited. There we go. Right up already. I don't need to do that. Um, oops. All right, I'm gonna go start from here and go down this way because this is a little difficult going in that direction. I didn't bring the thread up, so hopefully it worked. Oh wow, so it's really a lot easier stitching in this direction. I can put all of the pieces down. So I think I'm actually gonna keep rotating it um, so I'm in that direction. Even though I know it's free motion quilting, um, I shouldn't have to rotate it, but it really was easier. Get under there. All right, I'm glad we did it for 10 inches instead of the nine because I'm going to have a lot that I'm going to want to cut off here. Oh yeah, so the base piece, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, that'd be a cool idea. Yeah, okay, Linda, I like that. So we'll cut, maybe we'll do gray for the base then. Ooh, I like that. So we'll do gray for the base, um, for the piece, the piece of felt that will go underneath this, and we'll cut it like four and a half inches, and then, um, yeah, and then we'll have a, like a little gray border around the whole thing. Oh, that's cute. Okay, I like that a lot. Okay, I feel like I'm getting a little bit more of the hang of this. Whew! 
Woo-wee, I'm telling you, it's been a long time. Oh, let's try to go this direction. No, I like that we have a fix. Like, I like that I know that the bottom of this is going to be so wonky, um, but we have a fix that we're going to cover it up, and it's actually going to be so much better because it's going to have that frame, and it's going to be thicker. So, man, I love projects like this where, you know, yeah, you figure it out as you go, and you improve as you go, and come up with more ideas as you go. It's just, I'm enjoying myself now. There we go. Oh no, sorry about that, Robin. Who got it? Held up, there we go. Totally cruising now. Oop, lost a piece. You can go that direction. actually back down to here. Let's see. Now I probably want to start. Let's see you guys. I got, um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I kind of have a arch is going this direction, then arch is going this direction. I feel like, oh, they probably need to go this direction. And then just hit meet wherever it meets. So I'm going to get to here and I'm going to start arcing this way and then it'll hit all this and then I'll have to start like doing a weird triangle thing. Okay, that's the plan. So, all right, I need to get, I need to get over to here, over to up top there. So I'm going to just travel. Again, all this is going to get cut off. So I'm not worried about this at all. Okay, now I'm gonna start arches here. So I'm a little wiggly here. Okay, let's do it. It's crazy. Oh, this is gonna be kind of cool. So it's gonna get to all these funny jaggedy edge marks here, which I think is kind of neat. I could go right up to the line and then they'd be invisible maybe. I kind of like seeing them. I think we gotta angle this. 
this way a little bit. There we go. Well, thanks all of you guys for coming and joining me again. Uh, it is always so nice to see you guys every night here. So just a reminder, I am not going to be here Friday, and I'm not going to be here all next week either. So um, tomorrow is going to be our last day for a little while. We will be visiting a family. I got a little goofy, but we're attached. Has that funny little tiny squiggle in it. So yeah, in tomorrow's video I'll announce the winner of this and I really, really, really want to um, get this bag made for um, when we're gone. And you guys, I'm totally running out of my thread here. Let's see if I can make it to the end. I don't think I'm going to make it. Oh, nope, there we go. <laughs> ran out of, oh, I love this. Look, I ran out of my spool, which makes me so happy because I am trying to use up um, all of these weird extra spools that I have laying around. So I have this one. This one's not going to make it that far either. Oh, that makes me feel amazing using up scraps all over the place. I wonder if I can just start this up as if, it never came off the needle. I wonder if I can do that with free motion quilting. <laughs> We're gonna find out. So I didn't pull up the bobbin. Would this work? Why wouldn't this work? I probably have to, well, I don't know. Let's just throw this thread on and see if it stitches. I just need to get that thread underneath. There we go. <laughs> Can I just start up? Oh gosh, let's do that first. Oh dang it, I did a stitch. Nope, I did a stitch with a uh, the um, presser foot up, dang it, which means I have a total mess underneath here. All the more reason that it's gonna be a good idea that we um, cover this up because it's gonna be a giant, giant mess on the bottom. Actually, it's not looking too, too horrible. Oh wow, it is not, it's been a long time since I've done that where I've stitched with the um, presser foot up. There we go. Oh, trying to shortcut things and messing it up. Oh, you guys, I made spaghetti squash today, and uh, I uh, I haven't made that in a while, and I just love that so much. Um, have you guys ever done that before with the sp spaghetti squash where you, um, where you cut it, like, halfway down and then, um, like, pull it all out with a fork and it looks like spaghetti? Oh. I don't think I had that threaded. Oh, what is going on tonight? There we go. Oops, now I tied it in a knot. Ugh, man. Ugh. 
Wow, you guys, I am just, it is not my night for sewing here. But I'm trying. We're going to get these guys done and cute. <laughs> oh, yum, you made it before, Robin. It, I, it, I forgot how yummy it is, and it's so easy. So I just, I think the trick is that I don't cut, I don't cut the, um, I don't cut the squash from end to end. I cut it right down the middle. And what that does is it makes it more like spaghetti. Like it makes like long spaghetti strands. And man, I just put some salt and pepper on there and it it's like totally the same uh, consistency as like al dente spaghetti. I do it for like on 400 for... Um, like, uh, oh, see, something's stuck here yet, you guys. I think it might be time to switch the needle or something. Yeah. Let's see what's happening here. Something's not pulling right for sure. That seems fine. Okay, bobbin is definitely broken, so let's, let's do that again. Yeah, so do you guys do anything when you're doing squash stuff? Whoa. Do you do anything with um, the, anything with like the seeds or like all that stuff that you have to kind of pull out of, pull out of the, um, all the like guts, all the squash guts? I'm curious um, what to do with that because I hate just, uh, I hate just tossing it. Here we are. That feels like it's working again. <laughs> oh, goodness. Just compost. That's all I've been doing to compost pile. So we've done that before in the compost, and we have, uh, we have s squash growing in the compost sometimes, which I think is kind of fun. I tried to plant some of our compost squash, but it didn't do anything um, this past year. Oh, you know, rose pumpkin seeds? Is that, you know, are just, um, I wonder if any other, I'm sure other seeds are probably good, other squash seeds. Okay, let's see if I can get this working. It's nice that you guys joined me tonight. This is like my worst sewing night ever. I know some of you guys must have. Just nights like this where just threads are everywhere and nothing is going right. It is one of those days for me. I'm glad we're just doing these coasters because these coasters are kind of fun with um, all the goofy stuff on it versus like my that sleeve that I want to make. That's going to be... Um, that's going to... I'm going to want more precision than what I'm doing here tonight. And I actually think I want to do some free motion quilting on the top of that, too. Oh, this is still not working. All right, we're definitely changing the needle now, you guys. We are broke in some way here. So if you get to a point like this where it is just not working, like something just is getting caught or something's wacky, um, try changing your needle. It really does make a difference. Oh, you usually hang it up? Oh, you have these days too? Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks. I, I appreciate hearing that. All right, let's get a full-on new needle. That's usually a good uh, spot to start is a new needle. And you know, I'm using like I'm using old thread. You know, this is actually it's actually interesting because I haven't used any of this really old thread in a long time. 
and definitely not for quilting. And wow, maybe that is part of the problem. Like maybe all that does really make a difference. I mean, you hear about that, like, oh yeah, make sure, you know, fresh needle and um, use good thread and all that. But you know, maybe that's actually true. <laughs> Uh, and I'm actually almost out of this spool of thread also, which I'm so happy about because I am trying to use up, um, trying to use up all, all my old threads. Okay, that still seems to be working. We're going to have some massive threads in this spot, but luckily we are covering up the back so I can, um, no one's going to see any of this, which is fabulous because it's crazy on the back here. Okay. Pulling out threads all over the place. Need to recheck the thread too. All right, let's, let's just take the bobbin out and put it back in again. Just, just to make sure Make sure I put it in right, because who knows, maybe I didn't. Keep pointing. All right, it's hanging there fine. Okay, bobbin, check. Make sure there's nothing wrapped around down there. Nope. And this machine's been cleaned recently, so I'm not concerned about it being oiled or any of that stuff. I think, I think that's all good to go. All right, that feels normal. Okay, and at the top is all threaded correctly still. All right, let's just um let's let's plop our shapes down again since those are getting away from us a little bit. All right, let's do that. All right. This is the magic time. I'm, I think it's gonna work this time. <laughs> We're gonna start a little down lower, I think. Okay, I'm gonna start by pulling up that bottom thread. All right. All right, that feels good. Let's go. Honestly, oh gosh, yay! All right, so I, I do think this is all stemmed from when I started the, um, I started stitching without my presser foot being down. I think all of this situation is because of that. I'm just, I'm just redrawing this line. <laughs> Go back down. All right. <sighs> back at it. Yeah, if you don't put your presser foot down, that's really gonna mess up your whole situation. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm going to go side to side, I think, here. All right, feels like how it's supposed to again. I feel like I haven't had like a total meltdown sewing day in a long time. <laughs> I was overdue for sure. Whew. Persevering. <laughs>
threads again. I think it all helped. But yeah, honestly, I think it's when I um, accidentally start stitching with the presser foot up. I messed my whole thing up. I wonder why that is. I'm sure it just wraps around something in the bobbin. Um, goofy. Oh, Robin, I am using up my scraps from the uh, the Betts White um, Spooky Clock Tower. These are all my leftover scraps. Not all of them, actually, but it's, it's a bit of my leftover scraps. I'm going to make a set of coasters, like an abstract a set of coasters out of them, and I'm actually going to be giving it away to someone here. So, uh, again, if uh, anyone wants to try and win this crazy thing of coasters that I'm making tonight, um, just share this video, and I will announce the winner uh, tomorrow. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, go this way now, and I'm going to just kind of arch into here and then arch out. Ooh, get underneath there. It looks crazy now, but I think it's going to actually end up looking super cool. We'll take a look at it in a sec because I'm almost done quilting this. I think real quick it's going to start looking fun again. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> we are calling this quilted, so let's just take a look at it, um, and then then uh, I am going to trim this, and then we will add the other other parts to it. So, all right, it's kind of hard to see the um, stitching because it blends into the background. Um, oh, there's there's it from the back, so you can kind of see the direction that we took there. Um, that's going to get covered up though. Um, so I think. I think I kind of want to cut these into the four inch squares now, and then we'll cut the gray pieces into four and a half inch squares, and then we will set these on top, and then we'll just do a nice little border around it. Uh, I know we're going a little late tonight, but I want to get these done, and uh, man, I was just having so much trouble with this tonight. But we persevered and uh, totally made it through, so I'm pretty happy about that. So, all right, let's get, um, let's get my rulers out here. I'm going to just cut, so I want these four inches, and I know I got a good amount on the edge, so ultimately I need eight inches, which, one, two, three, this is a six inch ruler, so eight inches is about right here, and I am going to kind of center it. So I'm going to cut this off, and then I'll turn it around and cut four, two four inch strips, and then I will cut the other way to get the other four inches. So let's see, rotary cutter, you are hiding right here. Oh man, you guys, I just feel <laughs> like a relief that we are done cutting that. But here, this is where it's going to start kind of looking all clean. Okay, a nice, um, nice clean edge there. And actually now we have we have more scraps, really, that we could put in the scrap pile. Maybe I'll throw away these scraps, but... Or maybe I'll put them on my, um... My, uh, com computer sleeve. That could be fun. One, two, three, four. Alright. Look, it's gonna instantly look cleaner and more cool. Look, now it looks like art! <laughs> oh, it was taking a while to get there. Uh, getting to some art through through the mess here. All right, so another four inches. Okay, and then I want to cross cut on this way as well. I think we'll just align both. I don't want my ruler lines. So this too, we're just going to kind of trim the edges and then cut, cut the four inches. Oh, 
We're just kind of finishing off those edges. Oh, I like it. So this is, <laughs> this is ultimately going to kind of turn out how I was hoping, like these cool little abstract uh, coasters. Even how, like what a disaster um, sewing was tonight. These are still going to be cool. I'm really excited. Okay, here are the first two, and we will add that little border on them. I'm just gonna line these up again. Okay, let's get that other four inches. All right, trimming off the other crazy edge. Yeah, these are the edges where we switch directions with the quilting and stuff and where it looks just crazy. All right, so there, <laughs> they're cool. So you can kind of um, put spine, like see where they go together again, but you don't have to, they can go any direction and they all kind of look cool individually, I think. So I am going to cover up this bottom. You know, this isn't the end of the world. It is actually kind of cool looking, but um, you know, there are some wacky things everywhere. So let's, let's, Continue. Let's do what um, we want to do with this with this gray felt. So um, I want to cut some four and a half inch pieces, or maybe just four and a quarter. Let's do four and a quarter, and then we'll have like a little eighth, like a little eighth inch gray border around these. I think let's do that. Um, I could cut them after, but I think let's cut them before. So let's do. I'm just going to cut a straight edge here and then we'll cut a four and a quarter and then cross cut it to get our four squares. Then we will quickly uh, finish this up. I will put my that other foot on the machine and um, We'll be done real quick, I think. Let's see, I'm gonna do it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna do four and a half, and then I can trim them down later. All right, that's one, and I need one more. So I think these are actually gonna end up looking really kind of cute. And we'll wrap them up with um, some of the floss afterwards, so it'll be kind of cute and gifty a little bit. Uh, this has a like, quite a bit of a big fold in, so I think I'm going to iron, actually both of these do, I'm going to iron these pieces really quickly here. Uh, my iron's heating up just a hair. Remember this is that, uh, combination felt. It's that um, blend, the wool blend felt. So um, I can iron it. Uh, if you use like an eco, an eco blend felt, it felt, it will melt right to your iron. <laughs> so you don't want that. All right, I'm going to layer these and we'll cut our, oh, that didn't really press very well. Cut our four and a half inches. Again, I think I might trim this down, so I'm not too worried about it yet. I'm gonna use my favorite ruler here. I know we're a bit late tonight, but it's kind of fun. We're going a little later. I just wanna make these cute coasters. If you're just popping in, I had all sorts of trouble stitching tonight, sewing tonight, but uh, things are finally looking up now that we have um, have them cut out our coasters. I think they're looking so cute. And uh, again, these are just all scraps from 
the little felt village stitch along make along that we're doing all right so now i want to just kind of lay these on so it's kind of cute maybe they're cute this big we'll sew them on i might still trim them down but maybe the uh i kind of like the quarter inch around it so i need to switch feet and then we are going to just stitch around the top here then we'll have a nice clean clean bottom and i think that's that's kind of what the goal of this part is. If these end up being like not centered and kind of wacky looking, then then I'll trim them down a little bit. But I, I, I think we'll probably get away with doing it like this. Oh, I do like this border. That was a good idea. It does just kind of frame it up, doesn't it? Makes it one extra level of, of clean. Ah, fun. Okay, let's Scooch back down. So this is my quilting foot. I'm gonna need to change that. So let's unscrew that. It's kind of a weird to get off the machine because it comes off of the top. There we go. So done with that. Yeah, I think so too, Jackie. That border is just totally making it pop, isn't it? All right, get this guy back on here. Already I feel better having this this foot back on that man. I just I was nervous tonight just because I haven't quilted in a long time And you know what I had a right to be that turned out just wackadoodle All right, I'm just going to I'm just eyeballing this again It doesn't have to be perfect, but we are trying to get this border Similar all the way around all right Let's give this a go. Ooh, let's get this back up Put my stitch length back. All right, I'm gonna just start right here. We're gonna do like a little, about an eighth inch edge or so. Oh, let's get those presser feet back up too. There we go. I'm like, I'm not moving. I just, uh, I, I it's been so long since the um, feed dogs the feed dogs have worked. Actually, this is on free motion quilting. That was the first time I've used this machine with the feed dogs down. But now that they're working, uh, that's awesome. But I'm like, why am I not moving? I've touched all the buttons. <laughs> Forgot about the feed dogs. All right, I'm gonna pivot. Again, we're just, we're just uh, stitching this to the bottom piece, really, is all we're doing. And, you know, it's kind of making a nice finished edge, too. I'm about eight, an eighth to a sixteenth away from the edge. Just a little edge. When we cut some of these pieces, they, they um, didn't have anything attaching them anymore, so we're getting those, too. Thanks for hanging out, out around with me tonight. I know we're going like a good half an hour later than usual, but you know what? Sometimes, sometimes things don't always work out how you think. <laughs> tonight was one of those nights, but I think because of um, because of all like the mishaps tonight, uh, I think we're getting a way cooler thing than I was expecting, like with this border and stuff. I mean, that was uh, oh, what do you guys hear? had that solution and I think uh, it worked out just right for for this. It, it covers up all my bad stitching on the back and it adds this freaking adorable border. All right, I'm gonna just trim them on the front. I do wanna finish it too with like a little, little uh, tie them up in a cute little bow. But all right, there we are. See, so now it looks so finished on, on the back as well. Okay, I'm really happy with that. It's maybe a little wonky. I could maybe try and square it up, but I might just not bother. It's kind of cute like that. I like it. All right, let's 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 do the other three. I, like I said, I do want to get this done tonight, so I am gonna, I am gonna be here for a while yet. But 
but I think they're gonna be cute. So yeah, if you guys do anything with your felt scraps, let me know. I want to see it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Or if you do stuff with your scraps normally. Like I know I've been trying to use my scraps a whole lot more lately. Uh-oh. I think we are just about out of that thread too. <laughs> so we are going to run out of this red thread in the middle of this, which is makes sense. We're running out of the other things. I mean, we're on purpose using up old thread, but I'm going to need more thread. For it. Oh, there we go. For um, the rest of this, this guy here. But check it out. Another, another spool done. All right, let's see what else do I got over here. I think we are going to switch it up to this gray. So we do have gray in um, this project. This spool is actually almost done too, but it's the orophil and, and we have a lot more of this than what was on those other spools. But yeah, finishing up all sorts of stuff. I'm lucky to have I'm lucky to have all you guys here with me helping me through <laughs> helping me through when uh when sewing gets tough it's nice to have friends around how about that <laughs> There we go. All right. We're back in business here. <laughs> All right. And I think we have a lot of thread on this bobbin, so I'm, I'm thinking we'll be... Oh, Kathy, you're sweet. Oh, am I going to sign and date them? Oh, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get a permanent marker out and I think, yeah, I think that's a good idea. We should sign and, and date them. I think I'm going to lose this little piece on the end, but that's okay. I'll probably just do that with some permanent marker versus um, attempting to stitch this. So this is quite a different color, but it kind of it kind of goes with the whole collaginess of this. This gray, it's actually kind of cute. Glad we found a, a color that kind of went with this still. I think I might trim these down yet because it's it's moving a little bit as I as I sew, so it's kind of twisting the pieces a little bit. Get rid of that guy. All right, so we got two. Oh, you couldn't have persevered through the problems. Oh man, I I was getting there with that free motion quilting, but I'm like, I gotta figure out what's going on here. I needed to know why it wasn't working. And I really wanted to make these coasters tonight. I was going to be sad if we couldn't make them. Oh, there, now we're going smooth. So it's funny, I, I switched back to the Aurofil thread that I'm used to using and uh, 
you know, that there's plenty on that spool, and now all of a sudden it feels like it's running really smoothly. <laughs> maybe this machine is just really used to that thread, I don't know. Or maybe it has nothing to do with the thread, but it's feeling good and quick all of a sudden. It fe it's feeling back to normal all of a sudden. Oof, I'm gonna so many threads all over the place when we're done. Ooh, I like this one. That one turned out fun. Lots going on on that one. All right, one more. Ooh, and this one has a yellow jobby in the middle. Cool. Last one. So even the total messes can be kind of fun when they're done. And, you know, in the end, this is still going to be a totally, you know, if, if you were working on something like this and it just got crazy, like it just was not going well, like, like it was for me tonight, it's still going to end up being like these cute coasters that can actually be used as coasters. Like it's, there's a, they're still functional and I don't know, I'm pretty stoked for them. All right, let's check these out. See if I need to trim them at all. There we go. All right. Oh, they're fun. I like when this bleeds into the gray border. I don't know. Those look. Those look decent. I think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna trim them. I mean, it's felt, so it's kind of like this wobbly sort of fun fabric anyway. Maybe what I'll do is I'll press them, so that might uh, give it like a finishing, finishing touch. And then I think I'm going to take some of our thread, some of our floss, and we'll tie them up all cute. And then maybe I'll um, write, should I write on all of them or maybe just, maybe just the one? Let me get that red. So we have a little bit, here's my leftover thread from the project. It could be pretty with this gold. I think this was just wrap, I mean, I didn't actually end up using this gold, but it matches, it matches like that little, little gold bits in here. So I think, I think we'll wrap it with this, but let's um, give it a little press. I'm going to actually press it from this side. Oh, wow. That's, that's making it look nice and clean already, I think. All right. Oops. So I will, I'll just write on one of these so I can tie it up and everything. I want to see what it looks like. And then tomorrow I will um, pick the winner and I will send these to the winner. I just want to see what this would look like as a gift if you're going to gift this to someone. So I'm going to just pull some threads out of here. So again, I'm, I'm pulling from the side with the big, big label. Double it up. Oh, machines like what they like for sure. Yeah, that's so funny. I never really noticed before like how much my machine did like that Aurafil thread, I suppose. It's been using it for a while. It's used to it. All right, I think we will snip this. There, and then you could tie it into a little bow or tie like a little label onto it. Maybe I'll do that, put a little label onto it later, but let's just see what it looks like like this. There we 
go. I think we'll just uh, snip that and we'll snip this side. There we go! <laughs> so a little cute set of coasters here, you guys. We made it! <laughs> All right, so here we are close up. So just like a fun, goofy stack of coasters and they look all finished at the bottom. I think that was a great idea to cover them up like that. So awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for uh, being here with me tonight and uh, um, stitching these with me and hanging out and helping me through like the rough time of actually stitching this. Holy cow, did we have problems tonight. Or I had all the problems. You guys had all the help. Um, so I'm going to flip you guys around. You can see the spooky clock tower behind me, and we'll call it an evening here. <laughs> All right, you guys. There you can see the uh, little clock tower sparkling behind me here. All cute. Isn't that adorable? Oh, I just really like how that turned out, too. So again, I wanted to use up the scraps from from that project, so that's why they match so, mu so much. So we made a cute little set of coasters. <laughs> we powered through and we made them. So thank you again, you guys, for watching and helping me out here. And again, I'm gonna give these, these away. I'll, I'll give this little cute set that we made tonight with all the trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna give them away to someone here. I'll give them away tomorrow night. I'll announce the winner tomorrow night. Uh, so anyone who shares this video, tonight or sometime tomorrow if you're watching the replay um uh, the replay on facebook uh i will pick from all those shares so tomorrow i will announce the winner and then i will send this off to you so thank you again guys uh i will get this up on youtube as well at penguin and fish movies and thanks for hanging out with me a little bit later tonight you're the best all right guys good night